Can-Am's Outlander 1000R XTP, an ATV delivering an unrivaled combination of performance and work capability. And Can-Am's Renegade 1000R XXC, the machine that dominates 4x4 cross-country racing and easily the quickest 4x4 production ATV on the market. Two great ATVs we've reviewed independently, but now it's time to see how they stack up against each other in the environment that matters most, the trail. Hey everyone, Chad Westcott along with my buddy Brent Johnson here for ATV On Demand. Today we're out at Dirty Turtle Off-Road Park in beautiful Bedford, Kentucky, where we grabbed a cabin and we're about to hit the trails for the day. Cabin. Let me do We're excited about today's ride because we're about to hit the trails on two of Can-Am's most powerful ATVs. Our sport utility shootout winning Outlander 1000R and XTP trim versus Can-Am's XC Racing dominant Renegade 1000 XXC. We're getting ready to go hit it, but first, this ATV On Demand presentation is brought to you by... We use Maxima SC1 on our fleet of ATVs to help prevent mud buildup, speed cleanup, reduce the look of minor scratches, restore deep factory color and shine, and of course, there's the legendary SC1 scent. More than a new bike in a can, this magic spray works great on mountain bikes, automobiles, boots, or just about any other plastic, vinyl, rubber, or carbon fiber surface. Get Maxima SC1 at your local power sports dealer or at MaximaUSA.com. Choosing between these machines could be tough. We know we'd be leaving a lot of capability on the table if we went with the Renegade, because the Outlander is an ideal tool for working, hunting, and camping. But how much performance would we leave on the table if we didn't choose the Renegade? And are there any important differences we might not be considering? With those questions in mind, we set out to hit Dirty Turtle's scenic one-way trail system, but quickly got distracted by a long gravel road between the parking areas that looked ideal for starting out with some friendly drag races. Ordinarily, we wouldn't condone this type of parking lot hooliganry, but with Dirty Turtle closed for the day, we couldn't pass up an opportunity to line these beasts up. Can-Am tells us they share identically two 91 horsepower Rotax 1000R engines with identical clutching, but we still expected the Renegade to pull out in front based on its lighter weight and the fact that it's a friggin' Renegade. With ideal starts, the Renegade does feel a bit snappier off the line than its beefier brother, but the combination of hard acceleration and loose gravel caused it to float off line a bit. That's a phenomenon created by the power plant and clutching combo that's second to none on the market and a sensation that really only bothers you if you're drag racing for pinks. The Outlander still Go! feels snappy despite the extra weight, and that weight is a bit of an asset when the front tire is searching for traction with the 4x4 engaged. Man, that was fun. You get two big powerful machines like this, you can't help but want to run them against each other on a little drag race. Yeah. But uh, to me, the story of the drag race is that the Renegade feels a little bit faster off the line. Um, and I think we can attribute that to a little bit less weight, a little bit smaller tires. But that is not to say that the Outlander is slow by any means. They yeah. are very similar machines. They both feel fast. That one just feels a little bit sportier, I think. Yeah, the Renegade's really snappy off the line. But, uh, but yeah, like you said, the Outlander's no slouch at all. It's, it's right there with it each time. Yeah, the biggest thing that I like for drag racing about the Renegade, surprisingly, are those foot pegs. Yeah. Those foot pegs that come on the XXC models, they really let you like dig in and bite, even in our fly racing uh, riding boots. So that was almost an advantage because you can lean forward and, oh, yeah. and dig in a little bit more. Something that should come on every ATV. There's no doubt that these machines are powerful. But for those who just can't get enough power, there's an additional 10 to 15% more horsepower available from a good aftermarket exhaust like HMF's Titan, Performance, or Swamp Series exhaust combined with their pre-programmed machine and exhaust specific fuel optimizer. Having proven their performance value in our 2020 1000cc 4x4 ATV shootout, we installed HMF Titan Quiet slip-on exhausts and fuel optimizers on both Can-Am 1000s to unleash their stock horsepower potential and reduce operating temperatures. 
Their clean stainless steel construction with blackout option available cleans up the look of the stock cans. And best of all, the Titan Quiet System keeps sound output very close to stock decibels while providing a deeper, floatier sound. Okay, seriously this time, it's time to hit the trails. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that initially these machines have a very similar feel despite their aesthetic differences. The entire chassis are virtually identical, sharing the same 48-inch width and 51-inch wheelbase. Suspension travel is also identical with 9.2 inches up front and 9.9 .9 out back. Fox Podium 1.5 shocks are used on both machines. The Renegade's Podium RC2 shocks feature all the external adjustments you'd expect from high-end race shocks. The Outlander's Podium QS3 shocks feature threaded spring preload along with simple intuitive three-way compression damping settings. Each machine's suspension valving and spring rates are slightly different to match their intended uses. The Renegade's stock suspension setting is pretty stiff for the average trail rider, but well suited to its aggressive intention. The Outlander XTP is well prepared for spirited riding, but its setup is a little more plush from the factory, which seems appropriate for its intended use as well. Power steering settings are slightly different with the two machines, primarily for their different tire sizes. For the majority of a long ride day like this, we opted to leave DPS and the maximum assistance on the Can-Ams in order to keep the steering light for all day riding. Identical hydraulic disc brakes stop both machines, and they do a pretty good job of it too considering our rider and machine combos are nearly half a ton of Rotax propelled mass. Both ATVs also come outfitted with great looking cast aluminum beadlock wheels. The Renegade uses race appropriate 12 inch wheels while the Outlander uses slightly larger 14 inch wheels. If you want to learn about all the detailed specs and performance of both of these ATVs, check out their individual reviews right here on ATV On Demand. Our Outlander has been around a little longer than the Renegade, so in order to even the performance playing field, we opted to outfit both machines with a fresh set of Penda Bearclaw Evo tires. Heavy tires can have a negative impact on power transfer and handling, so Kenda's Bear Claw Evo tires were developed with a priority on keeping weight down without sacrificing durability. This makes them ideal for 4x4 ATV applications, unlike many side-by-side -side focus tires that are saturating the market today. Bear Claw Evos are designed for exceptional acceleration and braking in all types of terrain, and their directional design will help maximize steering accuracy on these high horsepower monsters. Like the stock tires, we went with 25-inch Evos on the Renegade, and 26-inch Evos on the Outlander. Of course, the larger tires, larger wheels, increased coverage plastic bodywork, racks, winch, and hitch all add up, making the Outlander a little over 100 pounds heavier than the Renegade stock 710-pound claim dry weight. But we're not the kind of test riders who are afraid of a few extra LBs, especially when each additional pound comes with a purpose. Larger tires increase ground clearance, the extra plastics keeps the rider fresh and dry, and racks, winch, and a hitch make the Outlander so much more than just a one-trick pony. The Renegade, on the other hand, makes no apologies for what it is. It came to rip, and it doesn't care about anything else. Sure, you could force the issue by adding a hitch or awkwardly securing some cargo, but it's never going to have the capacity of the Outlander. You can feel the difference in weight between the machines, especially in the front end of the Outlander, which, as mentioned in the drag race, isn't always a disadvantage. Dirty Turtle offers ample opportunity to test both the traction of our Kenda Bearclaw Evos and the capacity of the machines on steep inclines, and Brent and I both appreciated the slight advantage the Outlander had with a few extra LBs up front. It's harder to feel the performance advantage that the Renegade clearly had in the drag races while in a trail setting. And that's not a dig on the Renegade's performance so much as it is a testament to how little the weight mattered to us on the trail. While racers are always looking to gain every advantage they can by shedding every possible pound, the more casual rider, which is basically everyone else, shouldn't let the weight be the deal breaker in a buying decision. Yeah, I feel like the Renegade suspension is set up for a little bit more aggressive riding style versus the Outlander is a little more plush. It soaks up the rougher stuff. As far as power goes, 
you know, we talked about after the drag races, it feels like a little bit different um, clutching, but I don't necessarily think that it's different clutching. I think the weight is going to be what the biggest difference is between the Renegade and Outlander. But power delivery wise, these things feel very, very similar. You just have a little bit more features and storage and racks on this one. And uh, the Renegade, you sacrifice some of that for, for the sake of weight and that little extra punch off the line. Yep. The Renegade does have a distinct advantage though, and that's in the sight lines to the ground. So as far as the, the trail experience, what else are you noticing Like, is the difference between the two? Uh, I noticed that the Renegade has got kind of a sportier, it, it feels a little narrower where, I guess where the sight line across the front, uh, whereas that's got the rack, the Outlander's got the rack. Uh, it makes it feel a little bigger, a little wider through the trails. Yeah, so what you mean is these flared front fenders, they give you a little bit more ability to see what your tires are going towards. You can't necessarily see the tires, but you can see more of the trail. Right. Whereas the front of this Outlander with the racks, there's a lot of, uh, of the immediate trail that you can't see when you're trying to ride more aggressively. So those, those flared fenders, definitely a, a difference between the two machines on the trail. Yeah. We still couldn't see the tires, even from the standing position on the Renegade, but we could see enough to inspire more confidence, especially in technical terrain. The handling on the big Can-Ams is very similar. Can-Am told us the DPS was tuned slightly different on each machine, however that was to compensate for the difference in tire sizes. So while we switched back and forth between machines, there was no noticeable difference in the power steering. There was a noticeable difference in the suspension, with the Outlander being softer, which Brent and I both appreciated. Even as we turned up the intensity, the factory setting of the Outlander never gave up anything in terms of performance or running out of travel. The softer suspension setting helped absorb some of the trail chop and provided a milder feel through the handlebars, which makes long rides more comfortable. As we mentioned earlier, the Renegade's factory suspension is set up for aggressive riding. The Fox Podium RC2 suspension of the Renegade provides more adjustment capability, R for rebound, as well as high and low speed compression adjustment, C2. So a rider interested in truly fine tuning their suspension is going to appreciate the adjustability of the Renegade. For those who prefer their premium suspension with a little dose of convenience, the Outlander's QS3 setup allows you to quickly select between three compression settings. You lose some of the fine tunability, but gain the option of easily selecting between softer or firmer settings to adjust to your riding conditions. Towards the end of the day, we made some uninterrupted spirited runs around Dirty Turtle's perimeter trail, where we learned even more about the two machines. Bye. Good? Yeah. First off, we really appreciated the throaty sound of our HMF exhaust, but perhaps equally important was the reduced operating temperatures we noticed by adding the HMF fuel programmers. Emissions restrictions have most factory machines running a little lean, which increases engine heat. Simply adding the programmers gets the heat under control. Even on what was probably the last warm ride day of the season, we never noticed excessive heat from either machine. Secondly, the day didn't go exactly as planned in terms of our expectations. We've had more experience with the Outlander in previous tests and comparisons, but this was both Brent and I's first experience with the Renegade. With bias towards the Renegade created by the aggressive styling and the small but distinct advantages on the spec sheet, we expected to be fighting over the Renegade all day. We knew from our 2020 1000cc shootout that the Outlander outperforms the competition, and I think we were expecting a performance gap between the Renegade and Outlander that would be similar to that shootout. So at the end of the day, I think the story between the Outlander and the Renegade is what are you giving up in terms of performance to add some of the weight to the Outlander with the racks, the uh, protection on the front with the bumper, and the winch. And to me, I think they're very, very close in performance. I don't feel like you're giving that much up when you ride the Outlander, except for maybe a little extra weight in the front that changes the handling a little bit but you're losing all of the utility when you switch to the Renegade. Yeah, with the Renegade you have no, you can never really put a cooler on it or you know, load anything on the racks, whereas the Outlander, you know, you can always utilize the racks and utilize the storage on it. Um, 
whereas the Renegade, you give all that up. And the point is, they're both really, really fun trail machines. We talked about the difference in having the front fenders that offer, well, less sight lines, but more mud protection. So for the average trail rider, uh, do you want to be covered in mud at the end of the day? Because you're going to be on the Renegade that right. throws stuff everywhere. But with the fenders covering a little bit more on the Outlander, you're getting a little bit more of that protection. You might you might come home with uh, less mud on your drawers yeah. at the end of the day. And stay a little cleaner on the Outlander for sure. Keeping in mind that we were essentially comparing the factory setup of each machine, we both preferred the ride of the Outlander. Whether it was a difference in balance created by adding the extra weight, or the more forgiving suspension absorbing the choppy terrain, and in all likelihood it was a combination of both, we both felt more comfortable with the Outlander. It wasn't just a plusher ride either. The machine tracked better through corners and remained noticeably more predictable on basically every surface. The Renegade's lighter front end and stiffer suspension made it feel less compliant in most situations. Now we should point out that the trails at Dirty Turtle are a far cry from the rough and rutted XC tracks that the Renegade is set up for, and we expect this story might be different had our test facility been a GNCC course. But for a trail rider, the RC2 shocks of the Renegade would need some fine tuning to absorb the typical chop of a well-worn East Coast trail. As we finished our laps and our ride for the day, it was pretty obvious to both of us what our decision would be if we were choosing between these machines. We'd opt for the greater utility of the Outlander in XTP trim and sleep peacefully knowing that we weren't giving up much performance. But if you're still having trouble deciding between the two, keep in mind that Can-Am's premium options are customizable and the perfect blend of performance and utility for you could be the Outlander in XXC trim. I think the uh, story here with the Renegade and the Outlander is that they are both excellent trail machines. A thousand cc power out of this Rotax is probably more than most guys are ever going to need but it sure is fun to have it on tap. Thanks for checking out the video guys. We'll see you next time right here on ATV On Demand.